Hello everyone and welcome to another video on how to build serverless applications with AWS Lambda, .NET 6 and AWS SAN. In what's going to be the final video of this series, today we're going to talk about pipelines, about CI, CD and how to get your application into production. To do that, we're going to use some built-in features of AWS SAM as well as GitHub Actions to take some code from GitHub into our AWS accounts and also to run unit and integration tests against them. Let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in our code base now and um, to actually configure our CICD pipelines, the AWS SAM CLI actually has a built-in command to do that. So what I can run is some pipelines in it and then pass in the bootstrap flag. And what this will do is, oh, sorry, pipeline, pipelines, yeah. And this will allow us to now create a CICD, CICD pipeline using some predefined defaults. So I'm gonna use one of the template pipelines um, and I'm gonna deploy this from GitHub Actions. Um, so now I want to set up the stages of my deployment pipeline. So to do this, I'm just going to do dev and prod. Um, so I want to set up a stage. The stage is going to be called dev. Um, I want to use environment variables for my credentials. Um, set everything up in AWS one. I'm going to create some new IAM users for my pipeline to use. So we'll create all of them, create a new bucket. Um, we don't have any image Lambda functions, but some, the SAM CLI can support um, image functions as well. And then we get a little summary uh, and we'll just confirm that. And we want to create the resources for the dev um, stage. And then I want to create a second stage. I'm gonna call that stage prod. Um, and then the same set of credentials again. So we'll end to go through all that. And we've got a prod stage as well now. So we'll confirm that and we'll to create the resources. Okay, so what? So this is where um, the, the pipeline now understands that we're using GitHub and it's asking us how we're going to pass in our credentials. So what GitHub secrets are we going to use to actually configure our pipeline? So again, I'll leave these as the default. We've got AWS access key and secret key. Um, we want to use the main branch for our deployments. Our template file is in the root of the repo. And then here we have... Um, the dev and prod pipelines. So I want to create, for my dev pipeline, I can now configure the name of the CloudFormation stack that I'm gonna create. So I'll call that hexagonal architecture dev. And then for prod, we're gonna call that hexagonal, hexag, hexagonal architecture prod. There we are. And this has now created all of the defaults we need. So it's created these IAM roles. Um, we have also got now got a GitHub Actions pipeline that has been pre-created pre with some sensible defaults. So just to walk through this pipeline file that's been created. So it's gonna the pipeline's gonna run on main or feature branches. Um, and the first first thing it will do is run some unit tests. Um, there's a branch there to, to, to start deleting features and tearing down um, cloud formation stacks if a feature branch gets deleted. Um, and then we do, we, we, we build, we package up our code, we deploy it to our dev account, we run some integration tests and then we deploy it to our prod account. And that is the crux of the pipeline that gets created. So there are a couple of things we need to do to make this work with .NET 6. Um, so the first is during the build and deploy step, um, the, the SAM CLI actually tries to do the com compilation using a container. Now .NET 6 doesn't actually support that. Um, so we want to actually get rid of the use container flag. And because we've got rid of that use container flag, we now also need to install um, .NET 6 for the compilation to actually happen. So I can just add an additional step now to my um, pipeline just to use .NET 6 um, to ensure that .NET 6 is installed so the compilation can happen. And we're gonna need that in a couple of places. So while I'm here, I'll just add that in. So we're gonna need .NET 6 to run our unit tests. Um, we're gonna need it here where we build, the feet, build for the feature branch. Uh, we've already got it here when we actually build our main set of code 
and we're also going to need it when we run our integration test. So there's four places there that I've needed to add um, an install of the .NET um, SDK. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add the running of our unit tests. So if I scroll right back up to the top of the pipeline now, um, I have this run section here, and what I can do here, now that we have the .NET CLI installed, is simply run our unit tests. So if we now look under here, so there under product api.test um, and then our csproj file. So that really quickly has just configured um, unit tests. So now our pipeline can run unit tests every time code is committed. Excellent. So the next thing we need to do is configure our integration tests. So if I go down to my integration test section now, and again, I can just simply add dot test, the path to my csproj file, so dot net integration tests, and then integration test dot csproj. And there's one additional thing I need to do here. So the way the integration tests actually run is that uh, at startup of the tests, we actually dynamically load our API endpoint. So if we look at our SAM template, we actually have an output section where we actually output the API endpoint that's just been created from our template. And to make our integration tests a bit more dynamic to run across multiple environments, we load that API endpoint at startup time. And it does that by actually using the, the cloud formation SDK and we actually describe the CloudFormation stack um, as the setup of our tests and we actually read the output and read the Hello World API. And to do that, we need to set a variable against our um, integration tests of, of the name of the CloudFormation stack. So if I go back to my pipeline now um, and again here, I can set env CloudFormation stack name to be hexagonal architecture dev and if we scroll back up in here we can see that um, hexagonal architecture I'll just check I've got the spelling right because my spelling is terrible okay and we can take that there and copy and paste that into the dev excellent so now we've got our integration test set up so we're going to install that at six we're going to run our integration tests and we are actually going to pass in the name of our cloud formation stack so there's a couple of additional things we need to do now, um, one of which in the AWS console and the other being in the um, GitHub, GitHub UI. The first of which is we need to configure our IAM user that the pipeline is going to run as to actually have access to be able to describe our cloud formation stacks. So if I go to my um, users now, you see I've got this SAM CLI pipeline user um, and that user needs to have permissions to be able to we'll create that as an inline permission um, so add an inline policy so we would need to want cloud formation um, and we want to allow describe stacks so we want to allow this user to be able to describe stacks and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to set that to any. So this user can now describe any CloudFormation stack in this account. Um, ordinarily, you would, would restrict that down to a specific CloudFormation resource. And we'll call that allow CloudFormation describe stack. Perfect. So the second thing we need to do is actually give um, set the access key and secret key within our GitHub account. So to do that, I'm going to come into my uh, um, security credentials tab in the CLI, and I want to create a new access key. Now, I'm just gonna pause the video temporarily while I configure and copy these access key and secret key credentials over into GitHub. So what I've created in, in GitHub is this AWS access key secret and this AWS secret access key secret. And that allows us to secretly store our API key and secret key to be able to access AWS resources. Okay, excellent. So now we've got everything configured that we need. Um, the next thing I can do is simply commit my pipeline. So if I just commit that and 
push that up to GitHub. And because we've set this to automatically trigger on push of main or feature branches, this will kick off our workflow right away once this code has been pushed. So there's one thing I forgot to add in my pipeline and that is under my integration tests, I actually need to add the section to configure um, configure the AWS credentials for that job to use before, uh, before actually running the integration tests. We now have a running pipeline. So you can see there the CI CD pipeline has been added. It has executed successfully. And if we go in and take a look at that now, you can see that our our unit tests ran first and we can go in and explore all 11 passed. Um, then the packages were built. Um, this, this is the step that actually built our um, our artifacts to be then deployed with the SAM CLI. We deployed to the test account, or our dev account in this case. The integration tests were executed and there's only one integration test in the project and that completed successfully once I'd added the credentials, of course. And then we deployed to production. Uh, and if I now go into my AWS console and go and have a look at CloudFormation, um, you will see I have two new hexagonal architecture dev and prod. Um, cloud formation stacks, excellent. Um, that is how easy CI CD pipelines are to create with the SAM CLI. So there we have it. That is how to do CI CD using the SAM CLI. And you can see in a few easy steps just how quickly you can configure a usable and functional. CI CD pipeline to get your application both into dev to test it and then into production. This is the end of this series on the SAM CLI and .NET 6. I hope you found it useful. As always, any feedback, any comments, please send them to me. If you've enjoyed the series, please hit that subscribe button. Coming next, we'll get into a series on building event-driven applications using Terraform. See you next week.